For a closer look at the effect the coronavirus pandemic is having on the academic year in China, I'm joined by author and educator Berlin Fang. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Elaine. Good to see you again. Uh, Berlin, along with extra precautions, it seems like things are getting back to normal in China. So what will be some of the challenges ahead, you think, with in-person classes? Well, the, if there are one or two cases, it can explode pretty easily, as we have seen in many institutions across the globe. So that is one of the dangers that I see. Um, but with the precaution, with drills and rehearsals, with good hygiene habits, I, I'm, I'm sure this can be uh, under control. I know a lot of people are looking uh, eastward. What has China done right, you think, in getting kids back to school? Well, you can actually uh, uh, think of universities or schools as bubbles. They are part of the larger community. So you have to get the uh, disease under the virus, the disease under control uh, in the city before you can get it under control within the university. So I think one thing that China uh, done right has done right is that China tried to clear all the cases, tried to cure all the cases um, so that, you know, students do not have to worry about entering into a city that may flop, may may have uh, additional cases going on. So that is one thing that is done right. Whereas in the, some other countries, you know, the focus is on flattening the curve. The focus is on not overloading the medical system. So there are cases here and there. So people do not have as much confidence in entering the city as they could in a city where the virus is under control. I know this is the concern for every parent out there, including myself. How do you think students will be impacted educationally and emotionally by uh, the recent school closures and all the upheaval that came with COVID-19 and could still come? Um, do we need to be concerned about their futures? And do you think we'll see some sort of impact a decade from now? Well, I, I think this is a very interesting topic. In America, there's a lot of talk about, you know, students experience emotional and social isolation during the pandemic. Uh, that certainly exists, and also people who are uh, in their homes, they may suffer from abusive parents and things like that. And in America also, there are uh, situations when, you know, students depend on school cafeteria for their uh, free lunches. So school functions have, have changed. Um, but I, I don't think that we should um, uh, underestimate the power of uh, teaching online and the power of integrating technology into the learning and teaching process. Uh, I think China has, is, is learning pretty fast in this area because at the beginning, you probably remembered in, in March we have an inter interview and I was re I was recalling about the chaos about uh, the, uh, the 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 situation going out of control for many teachers. But I think they have they have learned quite a bit. I mean, it's just like a team development. We went through the uh, storming stage and then it's norming and and performing. So it's uh, things are, are going pretty well. And I, I think that uh, we still need to keep an eye on the social isolation uh, aspect of uh, being stuck at home, but we should be, have an open mind about, you know, online teaching. That's what I would think. Right. We certainly had uh, some time to prepare and kind of take what we learned back in the spring and apply it to uh, the fall with a lot of feedback from everyone involved. You're an educator. Uh, so what about teachers and administrators and educators, because we can't really forget them. I mean, you hear a lot about students and families, but teachers certainly, they uh, have health concerns as well, and they're also under a lot of pressure to teach in different ways, online, for example, from all different directions, families, their bosses. So how do we take care of them emotionally and professionally? I, I think I, if I have, I'm wearing the hats right now, wearing the hat right now, I would take, take off my hat towards them because they really, really work very hard to get ready for the fall. Uh, in my own university, I remember during the summer, we have uh, conducted numerous uh, training sessions for our teachers and everybody's learning very hard and getting their courses set up and uh, getting themselves trained to use the equipments in the classroom and things like this. So they work extremely hard and uh, also, when the semester starts, they are encountering additional difficulties. Basically, they are learning to speak again with a mask. And, uh, and also, uh, the greater difficulty is, you know, they are teaching like what I call dual channel. They, are, they have to deal with uh, the kids in the classroom, but some kids are just uh, at home, uh, and they are, they are learning to resume. So the teachers have to divide their attention, uh, taking care of the students in the classroom and students who are learning remotely. 
I really uh, want to encourage them to have some kind of self-care and um, take it easy on themselves. And I really also respect the administrators for all the work that they do because they have to, uh, um, you know, face a very uncertain future. They are planning and they know that their plans will change and it's, it is tough. I don't know how they, how, how did they do this. They measure the classrooms uh, and make sure that the classroom does not have uh, extra, does not have, uh, max, max its uh, capacity so that uh, the students can enter the classroom with uh, the reassurance that they will have social distance. And they, they are doing a lot of work. And I, I really respect both the administrators and the teachers and the staff members who are actually getting ready to teach students in the fall. It is hard work, I would say. Our hats off to them. They definitely deserve some sort of raise. Berlin Fong, yes. thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Elaine.